Rest in peace, boiling water. You will be missed. <laughs> All right, we're going to talk about specific latent heat. Now, we're going to be concerned now with changing a phase. So what that means is that when we're adding energy, by contrast, when we were talking about um, specific heat capacity, the energy was being used to raise the temperature. In other words, to make the molecules go faster. But now it's no longer. Now it's actually being used to break the bonds. In other words, to change the phase. It's important to understand different phases. So melting, what is that? That's when you go from a solid to a liquid. And freezing is the opposite of that. So that's when you go from a liquid to a solid. Now boiling is when you go from a liquid to a gas. And finally, condensing is the opposite. It's when you go from a gas to a liquid. So for example, if you live somewhere really humid and you have you know, a glass of water, for example, um, if you're outside and the water is really cold, for example, and outside is really warm and there's lots of moisture in the air, that, uh, that water in the air can actually condense and actually form on the outside. So it'll go from a gas to a liquid. Now here's a really important piece is that during the phase change, though, the temperature remains constant. That is really, really important to understand. So let's actually look at this right here with the PHET animation again. If you saw my other video on uh, specific heat capacity, we were looking at this right here, and as we raised the temperature, in other words, as we added heat, which remember is units of energy, it was just being used to raise the temperature. Let's see now what happens. So I'm going to do that. So right now, the units of energy are going in to raise the temperature. Notice the temperature is going up. And at some point, though, so that's what's happening. This is like specific heat capacity going on. But at some point, watch carefully what's going to happen now. At some point, though, we're going to start... Ooh, we're using the energy to actually break bonds. Do you notice energy is being released? Sure. But look at the temperature. The temperature is not going up. Do you notice the temperature is remaining constant? That's because we're changing phase. So I just want to make that very visible for you, a uh, visual, sorry. So that way you can see really what's going on here. With specific latent heat, it's related to changing the phase. All right, so we have a definition for specific latent heat, and it's just this right here. It's the energy per mass absorbed or released during a phase change. And we have an equation for it as well. So it just goes Q equals M times L. And this, again, is in your data booklet, so hooray, you don't have to memorize it. Now, what are the units? Well, Q is heat, remember, that's in joules. M is mass, which is in kilograms. And then what would specific latent heat be? Well, if you imagine getting L by itself, it would be just Q over M, so that must be joules per kilogram. So that's the units here, it's joules per kilogram. And that's really the main piece that you needed here, I think. That's why I like this. The woman in front of me at the airport security has a bottle of frozen water. They want to take it. She said it's not a liquid. She's not wrong. Okay, so if we look at this here, an exam tip right here is just add a term Q equals ML to any time there's a phase change. So what I mean by that is, before when I was showing you how to set up Q lost equals Q gained, well, if you've got a side right here where you're changing, for example, like let's say you're raising the temperature, you'll have one of these right here, and then you just add to it one of these. So again, this first one right here, that'll be for a temperature change, and this one right here will be for a phase change. And it can happen where it's both. For example, what if you start off with some cold water and you heat it up? Well, of course, you're going to heat it up. And that means you're going to have some MC delta T until you bring it up to, you know, 100 degrees Celsius. And at that point, then you're going to change phase. So that's why you have to include these terms for both. And just to remind you again, remember, uh, latent heat of fusion, and what is that? That's going to be the specific latent heat right here that's related to melting. Remember, melting is when you go from a solid to a liquid. And latent heat of vaporization is when you go boiling, which is going from a liquid to a gas. Okay, so let's look at a graph. This is a very typical kind of graph. I'm going to show it for you uh, for H2O, in other words, for water, but it depends. If it's you know solid, then it's ice. If it's gas, it's uh, steam. But we're going to use H2O. That one's a nice one because most people know it because how it's defined with Celsius. So for example, zero Celsius is here. So we start off with some negative number, and of course it goes up in temperature, and then it stays the same temperature at zero. Then it goes up again until 100 Celsius, and it gets flat. After that it goes up again. So what's happening at these different points? I want to just point out right here, from here to here, see where it's flat, where the temperature did not go up, even though you added energy. Remember, heat added means you're adding joules of energy. Uh, here you have a phase change, and right here you also have a phase change. Both these red parts are here with phase change. Now if you're doing a phase change, which one is it? Well, from right here it was at a negative right here, so it must have been a solid. And here it must be melting. So I'm going to write that one down right here. This is where we're melting this. And of course what's happening up here at 100 degrees, we must be boiling. 
So you notice then you can always tell again, phase changes are when it's flat. When it's going up in temperature, those are when you have a Q equals MC delta T. So let's take a look at what kind of materials we have going on here. So uh, these phases of matter. So right here we've got only solid, and that's because we're going from a negative temperature to some, well, to temperature of zero. Because we have solid, and what is it? It's ice in this case here because we have H2O. Well, what's happening is now while it's melting, that means, of course, we still have some solid ice, there's still some left over, but now we're starting to add more and more water. So the water is the liquid form here. Now, of course, what happens here, after we're done melting, what happens? Well, now the energy that you add is used to heat it up, in other words, to raise the temperature. That means we must have just water here. So we have only water in this case. And now what happens during boiling? Of course, now you're starting to get some gas. So you have water plus you have steam, we call it. That's the gaseous form of uh, water. And what happens then after that? Well, after you've boiled until you know, you've changed the phase completely, well, what's left over then is just steam. And that steam can go up uh, quite a bit of temperature here. So in other words, you can add lots of heat. You can actually have very, very, very hot steam. And so you actually have to be very careful. If you're near steam pipes, for example, you might have seen this in really cheap, bad you know, movies where someone like puts their face in front of a steam pipe and ah, it burns them. Well, it can. It can be quite hot, many hundreds of degrees. So be aware of that. But just as far as looking at this here, here's where we have an Q equals ML because we're changing phase. Here is a Q equals ML because we're changing phase. And these places are here where we're raising the temperature here. It's a Q equals MC delta T, MC delta T, MC delta T.